Hello everyone. Today I am going to demonstrate how to mesh an asymmetric volute. Firstly, I will show how to import a geometry file in step format, then create a surface mesh for the geometry, and finally generate the volume mesh for it. The UI is already open and the working directory is set to volute directory. The CAD geometry provided in step format is being imported into the UI. The geometry is intact with all its edges shown in green color. The green color indicates that the geometry is watertight. If there is a good STL representation available, generating the surface mesh can be avoided by importing the STL file into the UI. The surface mesh can be generated using the mesh button. I am entering the pre-calculated values. Please refer the manual for more details on each parameter. The basic philosophy is to generate the surface mesh which represents the entire geometry captured with triangles. The surface mesh is being exported to TRIA format by using the export option. The TRIA surface is written to the current working directory. The exported TRIA surface is being loaded into the UI from the surface tab. The entire geometry is a single surface. It has to be split into pieces in order to differentiate the slope discontinuity. Surface can be split based on the feature angle under split button. The current surface is split into four surfaces. It's a good practice to check the feature angle of each surface after split so that we can be sure that there are no skewed triangles in the surface mesh, which may cause an issue for grid generation. The maximum allowable feature angle is 45 degrees. The grid cells would tend to get distorted in the regions where the feature angle is above 45 degrees. The split surfaces are being saved to the file step1.fra from the topology tab. The wireframe construction here is followed using the bottom up approach. A face will be created first for a cross section and then copied and rotated along the volute surface to form the blocks. To create a face, work plane is being positioned using define work plane option. Entering the desired work plane parameters. The work plane is positioned at the desired location as shown here. Next, the geometry will be clipped to view the cross section of the volute. To clip the geometry, section button is being used, which can clip the geometry either on positive or negative side of the work plane. Four corners are being created on work plane. The corners are positioned intentionally inside the surface. Please note that in grid pro, blocks may not be at the exact location of surface, but it should be positioned approximately closer for better grid convergence. These corners are being linked using link button to create the face. Next step is to copy and rotate this face along the volute surface. To do that, these corners are need to be added to a corner group. The corners are added to group C1. Since the volute flow path cross section varies, a constant face cross section of a block may be too big or too small for the geometry. Hence, copy operation will be carried out in two steps. Rotate faces option is used on corner group C1 for 180 degrees with 10 copies to rotate the face and form the blocks. Second half of the volute cross section is considerably smaller than the existing wireframe face. So the end face will be scaled down so that it can be used for rotating other half. The end face is grouped in corner group C2. To scale down the face, the corners are being repositioned manually on the work plane. Again, rotate face option is used on corner group C2 for 135 degrees with 8 copies. The blocks are created for the spiral flow passage of the volute. Saving the file before proceeding further. Next step is to create a block for the outlet region by extruding the initial face created at the start of the blocking. This can be achieved using the copy button. So grouping the corners in corner group, then aligning the work plane to the grouped corners and repositioning it to the outlet location. To copy the grouped corners, click on copy button and select link and projection option. Again repositioning the outlet face manually with respect to work plane position for better grid convergence. Next step is to create blocking for the tank region. To do that, the blocks have to be linked to form a trumpet shaped structure. 
Additional insert is added for block exclusion along the valued flow path, which will be explained in a different video. Three additional phases are being added on the outlet region block to link them together. Saving the file before proceeding further. Next, the blocks will be created for the inlet region of the volute. To do that, one sheet is being inserted on the vertical direction representing the inlet surface height. The faces to be copied are being added to the group so that it can be wrapped to form blocks. The group faces are wrapped as desired. Saving the file before proceeding further. Next, all the boundary faces except the faces defining the inlet region will be wrapped to create O-type topology structure. Before adding them to the corner group, the face defining the inlet is being excluded by inserting a sheet. The insert is required because in Grid Pro, when two corners are added to a group, all links connecting the two corners are added automatically. Next, all the boundary faces are grouped one by one and added to a single group. Corner group is being wrapped with 0.1% ratio. Next step is to associate these faces to their respective surfaces. The faces are being grouped and assigned to its corresponding surfaces. Let's check the validity of the topology. The topology has mildly severe singularity. The topology created is mildly severe because the block emerging from the convex corner is free to move on the volume on either directions due to the way grid pro works. This would result in a highly skewed grid. So to resolve the mildly severe topology, an internal surface passing through the intersection of these surfaces need to be created. This will be shown in a different video. For now, the internal surface which is already created is being loaded into the UI. Since the surface is guiding the block faces in the volume of the grid, the surface will act as an internal surface. Hence the orientation of the surface is being changed to two-sided. The existing wireframe structure needs to be modified such that there exists one-to-one -one connecting face on both the side of the faces assigned to the internal surface. The faces representing the guiding surface should satisfy the valence condition. The valence condition says that the block emerging from the face assigned to a surface should be 2 at the boundary face and 4 in the volume. Let's check the valence condition for each corner. So, in order to achieve the correct valence condition, the block needs to be split using internal wrap. Before proceeding with the internal wrap, let's group and assign the respective corners to the internal surface. Since the faces are already assigned to the internal surface, the internal wrap will automatically modify the surface assignment for all the three surfaces and outputs a valid topology. Internal wrap for 5% with an insert is being done for the assigned faces. Note that now it satisfies the valence condition. Now the topology is valid without any singularities. For faster grid convergence, it is always preferred that no block should have higher aspect ratio. So splitting the blocks with higher aspect ratio and modifying the edge densities wherever required.
Starting the grid generation process using start button. Changing the grid writing interval to 300 sweeps in order to reduce the time taken for the grid generation. Loading the grid once the surface force becomes zero, which took approximately 10 to 15 minutes. Analyzing the grid. Note that the grid blocks are stretched near the tank region. This is caused by the singularity. The singularity can be moved from the tank region by splitting the blocks. The desired corners are being grouped in C3 and wrapped internally with 2% ratio. Modifying the edge densities to move the singularity away from the tongue region. The grid generation process for this topology took around 15 minutes, which is not shown in this video. The existing grid loaded in the UI is being deleted since the blocking structure is modified. Note that the grid quality has improved after the internal wrap. The grid points on the cross-sectional grid sheet is also looking good. Let's check the quality parameters of the grid. Machine an asymmetric volume like the one shown takes about 1 hour including the block construction, internal surface creation and the grid generation time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel to get the updates on the new videos.